Welcome, kings and queens, to another episode of Unapologetic, your number one podcast. This is the show where kings and queens tell their legacies and on. So get ready for the gems to drop and pull up to the table because we're ready. I hear that too often. I know some people say, well, man, that's innately you should know that. Mm-hmm. We live in a society where we know a lot of things should go one way <laughs> and it really don't go that way. So let's, you know, let's just get the elephant out of the room. Mm-hmm. So with you, it's, it, I wanted to ask, what is the goal of this organization? Because like you're saying, you, you, you're spreading out to public schools, you're spreading out to organizations that that are looking for something that they can build off of. Mm-hmm. And so it's almost like you're, you know, you're trying to spread a curriculum that can be implemented within the school systems around. America. Yeah. Is that sure. true? Yeah. I mean, I think that the goal is to impact as many youth as possible. Like, I think like when, when we as adults, like people, especially people who are in positions of leadership and they can make things happen, like, you know, just like that, like. Like one of the things that I don't think that we do enough of is is target um, the individuals who are have not been um, what's a good word I don't want to say tarnished um, but they haven't right. been uh, I I know how you feel but you got it's unapologetic baby they <laughs> understand we got right <laughs> you know because we as adults yeah. it's sometimes like we've already we've been through some stuff that. Honestly, oh, yeah. like, you know, some people, a lot of us are set in our ways um, and we, we wonder why the world continues to be so negative. Like why we still have so much gun violence, why we still have so many um, youth who, you know, who cater to to social media. And, you know, they look up to, you know, these these I, these cultural icons that aren't doing anything positive. I think like Eric Thomas like the you know motivational speaker one of the spe- speeches yeah. that i seen him talk about is like in one of the speeches he referenced like and there was a hip-hop artist who came to their town and he took their money but he didn't pour anything into them like yeah, i think I, that yeah. we as a you know yeah. I, that was one of my favorite speeches like he i think we need to to target more towards the youth who have not been corrupted yet you know the ones who we can we can impact more because they haven't seen the the negative impact of the world yet they haven't you know experienced life yet so why not change that mindset uh and it's really not even changes in their mindset it's really like molding their mind into what is already what could be a possibility so i would love right. for our curriculum to be used in uh schools because i think that's this the, one of the reasons why i created is because the things that we're teaching were not taught to us in school like the things that we were like, nobody taught me about social etiquette. I mean, I was blessed to be raised in a two parent household where my dad and my mom taught me the respect of, you know, opening the door for a young lady or saying thank you. Or like what kills me is like when you walk into somewhere like Family Dollar or Dollar General or whatever, and they say, hey, how are you doing? And a lot of people just walk by and don't say nothing. I'm like, yeah. do you not hear this person just, <laughs> you know, greeted you? Like, you know, right. so it's just common courtesy stuff like that. Like, I want our curriculum to be involved in these spaces because, yes, we are education is important. But what about like life skills? Like you got street smarts. But what about what are you going to do when you walk into an environment where somebody is talking about social justice or they're talking about the economy and the conversation is going way over your head? So right. these two people are talking, but you just stand in there because you have no idea what they're talking about. Like it's an opportunity to prepare our youth to have be able to hold a conversation. Um, so I think just as much as the education, those core educational pieces that they teach about in school is needed. It's important for curriculum like SWAG to be involved in the school as well, because like kids, when you go to college and you don't know how to hold that conversation, it takes time to learn. You know, I right. want to prepare them before they get in, in the front of these interviewers and they get asked questions that they don't know about. Man, that I, I ran into a few kids like that, you know, that mm-hmm. that that have beautiful minds, man, like mm-hmm. intelligent as hell. <laughs> and it's just like, man, what are you doing? 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it, and I'm and I'm happy that you brought this up because this program that you have, swag needs to come to Muskegon. Mm. I oh, really feel like implementing not just Muskegon, all the Muskegons around the country. Now, <laughs> like seriously, because the most people think street smarts is all that you need. Yeah. And it's like, no, like mm-hmm. we, we have to, we have to adapt as we grow older. If yeah. not, we will die. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's mm-hmm. like, we're already witnessing this in reality. Mm-hmm. The, our, the expectation of, of youth nowadays barely hits over 20. You're right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you mm-hmm. telling me I'm gonna outlive your child? Like that <laughs> that that's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. And people we're comfortable with it. And so hearing you rebuttal that, not in a you know, beating matter like everybody else trying to, you know, beat beat the goodness in somebody, right. you're you're offering them a full plate of delights. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all like yeah. you you're not screaming at them, you're not trying to force them. No. You, you actually giving them a, get, taking the time to pick and choose the the icons who are making a difference mm-hmm. that they still follow and don't know that they still follow them, yeah. <laughs> and then serving it to them like, look, man, y'all been eating all this candy. Did y'all know y'all got steak in the back? Let me, right. let me go help y'all real quick. And you mm-hmm. just serving them up, and they be like, oh man, I had this order. Yes, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So man, everything comes around in full circle. And so when a lot of times when I did, when, when I was hearing about the organization, you know, I was, uh, I, and I had a great conversation with, um, uh, the founder of Acme, Miss Sierra. Yeah. And oh yeah, she's uh, good people. Real good. Man, people. Beautiful person, man. Um, and the way that she broke down Acme, mm-hmm. her foundation, it reminds me of yours. It's just in a different type of web. You know what I'm saying? So I I see that each person that I, like I said, I was going to drop some names. Each person (laughs) that I, I've either conversated with or, uh, you know, just in passing y'all share the same type of outlook as far Mm -hmm. as being more than, uh, a, a wealthy or a successful business owner. Yeah, you know what I mean. You, it's mm-hmm. almost like you're trying to be a superhero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, so is that is that the type of of ordain that you're trying to show 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 people in the community that you know I'm not here just to make a buck, man. I really yeah. care for you. Mm-hmm. It is, you know, like it's funny, like you really did your research. Which I love. Um, oh yeah, and you do our job. <laughs> <laughs> and Sierra, like with the Acme Foundation, like I really feel like she is like, um, and I, I don't even think I've ever told her this, um, but I really feel like she was like one of the people who really helped to to grow our organization because, like, it's funny how small the world is because she outside of the Acme Foundation, her work that she does with the city, she works in the same department with my mother-in-law. Um, so, wow. like, it's like, <laughs> it's crazy how small the world is. What? Um, yeah, man. <laughs> but I reached out to her, and I, when I was first trying to be, have swag as a tax exempt organization, and I knew that she had created Acme already, and I knew that she, you know, had her degree in law. Um, so I reached out to her, and she walked me through how to set up you know, my organization is a 501c3 tax exempt organization. And she was just like as nice as could be. And she's been following uh, swag and invested into swag. Um, so it's awesome to have a community partner um, like hers, um, her organization, the youth in her organization. I think her program that was called uh, Philanthropy, Philanthropy Looks Like Me. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They actually awarded swag. Um, with some funds, um, they picked our organization as one of the organizations to fund uh, through their entrepreneurship program. And it's one of the things that I really have wanted to create with SWAG is cre- creating the opportunity for you to to be seen. 
like we mm -hmm. talked about me stepping out of the way and letting other people shine. Right. Like that's how I feel about the youth. Um, so we have a, like a lot of youth uh, led programs where they create a monthly event each month because I want them to get that experience of being in front of people and showcasing wow. what they do. So like our first community event that we had that the students plan was a family literacy day. It was like a, uh, it was on November 13th, a couple weeks ago. And they planned this whole event for the community. It was a great turnout. We had like a hundred plus people. Uh, we had a lot of community partners come through. Um, so it was just awesome to see that. Um, but I, 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 I try to make sure that people know that I'm not afraid to be different. Like money is important. Money helps us to do what we we want to do and we what we would like to do. But no, money has never been a driving force for me. Um, like I was telling you before, when me and my wife were decided for her to stay at home and income was tight, right? Like, like I was still happy. We were still happy. Things was just a little bit tight. Right. So money is, you know, I know what it's like to not have a lot of money, but I and I know what it's like to have. Uh, more than enough money for me to do things that it, to live my lifestyle, right? Right. So money is not important to me. It's not my driving force for for life. It's not my driving force for um to do what I do. My passion is. I mean, of course, I want to create generational wealth for my family, but I also want to instill into them and to the community to know that, like, if your child is coming to my program, is because I want to pour into them and help to, them to be the best adult that they can be. Like, I don't need anybody to tell me uh, going back to Eric Thomas again I don't need anybody to give me affirmation for me to do a, a good job if an organization or if a community partner is paying me a certain amount of money to to teach my curriculum or if I'm going into like a boys and girls club where I did it for free then I'm going to give both of those organizations the same amount of passion that I have it's right. just who I am as an individual um, so that's what I want people to know about me and to know about swag. Like we're here, but the community is, is not about any money amount. Like it's about us doing the work that needs to be done to see our society move forward. Man, it's almost like you read from a book, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, this is, man, I've been enjoying myself. Man, yeah, I, I know y'all is, man. I, I keep telling y'all, we keep bringing the best of the best minds on that. Uh, your whole outlook, man. I want to see it prosper, like wholeheartedly. It, it's amazing, man, what you have created in such a short time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because you, I, I've, I've been in meetings with huge budgets with organizations, and they are just blah 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 blah, and ain't <laughs> nothing about the community. It's all about yeah. where the money going to, who's paying what. Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right, I'm tired of hearing the same blah, blah, blah. Now that I'm sitting in front of you and we're having this conversation, it's like I finally see what I wanted to see in mm -hmm. the, where I was. I hope it was there, you know, yeah. to see with the much power and influence they had. Mm -hmm. But I will take it wherever I can take it. Yeah. So it, you have literally, in my perspective, grown to their level in just a smaller scale. Yeah. You know what I'm sure. saying? Um, like, uh, I don't know if you know Dr. Eric, uh, I want to say Carson. Uh, excuse me, doctor, if I'm killing your last name, <laughs> but he's the found co-founder co of Atomic Object. I don't know. Okay, so great, great, my beautiful mind, man. Uh, retired CEO. Uh, -huh. uh His corporation... If y'all haven't seen this, go on Unapologetic, hashtag number one podcast, man, and, and tap into that interview. But he's in the small Forbes list. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, and yeah. he doesn't even act nothing like wow. what he's <laughs> worth at all. Like, I've seen this man in Grand Rapids just about. And, you know, never knew who he was until yeah. connection-wise. And then I'm like, man, you've been... You know what I'm saying? Drive a regular <laughs> car. Uh -huh. And it's like, I love that mindset. Like he, he even said to me how you put it down. Like money doesn't drive me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I, I, this is my passion. And just mm -hmm. 
people engaged and money came. And so yeah, exactly, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's mm -hmm. like, I love that outlook because every time I get certain, certain people faces and we have a conversation, the first thing they go, they bring up is money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I understand money problems and stuff like that. Well, there's ways around that. Mm -hmm. And this is the way around that, y'all. Yeah. Finding out information, networking, building mm -hmm. your own table. Yeah, you hit all types of pinnacles today, man. I appreciate that. But uh, uh, I ain't going to keep you too long. I, I have one more question. I have one oh, more. yeah, for sure. So uh, to bring everything full circle, right? I, I, I want to know, what it, are you into having other businesses or organizations work with you guys to help build their program up or yours or, you know, mm -hmm. like a, I don't, I don't even know how to put it in words, but is that, oh, is that something that you guys are looking into or maybe not? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, one of the things that like I had to be honest with myself about um, and just you know, make sure that I was being true to myself. It's like, like I love shouting out other people and the work that they doing just as much as I love, you know, shouting out swag. So even going back to when I was talking about, you know, ordering, you know, getting partners from Grand Rapids when I was living in Florida from Grand Rapids, because I was trying to put other people on too, while I'm in another state, like that's always been the goal. Like, so, you know, I have, outside of the the curriculum that we have and outside of the the lessons that I teach, like I know that I'm not like uh perfect in teaching every single thing. Like and I don't want to create war war work for myself. So if there's an organization or a business that is doing something a lot better than me or that's their expertise, like why not work with that organization or that business to help, you know, fulfill whatever to fulfill the goal like the goal and at the end of the day is to impact you and why should it matter whether i'm sitting in front of them teaching it or whether somebody else is sitting in front of them teaching it so you know i've had like other organizations come in and like safe haven ministries has come in um to teach about teen dating violence and healthy relationships i've had the grand rapids uh media center come in to teach about film and media and then my students were able to to create a promotional video where they filmed the promotional video for swag. Um, I had a um, family outreach center come in to teach about mental health awareness uh, for my students. So I'm not at all, you know, trying to keep okay. swag to itself and not build up anybody else. That's always been the goal. Oh, sh man. I thought I had him, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had him, but he been coming with the books, man. Oh, man. Man, I, I appreciate your time, brother. I really do. Man, you welcome to the family, the unapologetic family, for sure. Uh, I appreciate man, that. For real, man. Anytime you want to come on to the show, we're going to swap information and <laughs> stuff like that, man, because I got some big, big ideas that I think you will love just to run with. I just, All right. you know, they're not for me. <laughs> they're not for me. But everybody, man, I thank you all for tuning in to Unapologetic, man. Like once again, thank you for the support. Man, we've been actually pushing it, man. We we over twenty over five thousand downloads and plays. Oh, wow. We're overseas now in four different countries. So man, we thank you all, man. That's that that hits home right here. But uh make sure you guys Hit up Wardell Frazier organization, man. Swag. I have all the descriptions below. Um, if y'all have any questions, man, please leave a comment. Email me. If you want to come on to the show with your business, let me know what it is. We'll talk. And, you know, I, I love this passion, man. I keep bringing it. Pre keep bringing your legacy. But Mr. Wardell, man, I thank you so much, man. And uh, continue to do what you do. You have unapologetic podcast support. We'll be, we will be in touch uh, for sure. And so, man, uh, thank you and stay unapologetic, man. Shout out to you too, man. Like, because this platform is needed. Um, like it's, it's an opportunity for people who don't get 
a recognition for what they do because there's a lot of people doing amazing things out there and people don't take the time to to really hone in on the people who are doing these amazing things they always look at people who are already noticed um so shout out to you for going above and beyond and just connecting with people because like i love seeing uh, you know all the shows that you have and people who are doing amazing things like it's needed like we shouldn't appreciate it keep ourselves in silos and boxes I appreciate you for bringing that up. Oh, yeah, man. Make sure y'all go subscribe to Unapologetic Hashtag Number One Podcast.